Hey, good morning and welcome back. What does God do with unfaithful leaders? Our study today is from Jeremiah 52, verses 4 to 11. Now it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and encamped against it, and they built a siege wall against it all around. So the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. By the fourth month, on the ninth day of the month, the famine had become so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then the city wall was broken through, and all the men of war fled and went out of the city at night by way of the gate between the two walls, which was by the king's garden, even though the Chaldeans were near the city all around, and they went by way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king, and they overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. All his army was scattered from him, so they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah in the land of Hamath, and he pronounced a judgment on him. Then the king of Babylon killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and he killed all the princes of Judah in Riblah. He also put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and the king of Babylon bound him in bronze fetters, took him to Babylon, and put him in prison till the day of his death. That's a pretty grim picture there. If only Zedekiah had done differently as Again and again, Jeremiah pled for him to do. So the siege of Jerusalem began about 588 B.C. and ended in 586. And by the time it got to the end, it was pretty severe, the situation. King tries to escape. He's captured. We just heard about it. Nebuchadnezzar was not a generous person some of the time. He kills the sons of Zedekiah before his face, and then he puts out Zedekiah's eyes, and he, he's actually taken back to Babylon and dies a blind captive in Babylon. Tragic end. Now, in the first incursions of Babylon against Judah, there'd been two, two major incursions before this last one. Babylon had been pretty severe, but they left people alive, and it didn't seem like they were actually really trying to end the nation. But on this third one, and this was really severe, it was kind of like the total destruction. We're not going to allow there to be a kingdom of Judah. That was Zedekiah's plan here. So things are much more severe this time around. Now, not all unfaithful leaders have as bad, as, as openly bad as, of an ending as Zedekiah had. Many times an unfaithful leader does his thing and he goes away into retirement today and, and he'll face the Lord in the judgment. Hopefully he repents long before that. But unless the unfaithful leader repents, all he can expect is an ignominious end, a really bad end. And we want our leaders to be straight and true, men who can't be bought or sold, men who's, who knows what the truth is, and they align like a compass the arrow lining straight up. But all who use power and influence to work against God's purposes and don't relent, they will have a terrible, terrible end. Today's the day of salvation for the living. Today there's still opportunity for us to come over onto God's side of the plan. Yes, if you're one of the leaders and you've been leading in the wrong direction, we know it's hard. We know that a lot of people won't understand, but God's calling for faithful men and women. He's, he's pleading. He wants you. He's put you in a position. Don't wait forever and preserve your influence until someday, 80 years from now, when it'll be too late. Use your influence for the kingdom now. Be faithful. Be right. Oh, God is calling for leaders who will be true. Look at the example of Zedekiah. That's an example you don't want to be part of. So this is, there's still time to turn to the Lord and lead his church forward in the right line. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray for our leaders. Dear Father in heaven, the church has many leaders today and much trouble and decline of spirituality in the church. Lord, help us to be true to the teachings of your word. Help the leaders to be able to, to think clearly and understand your purpose and to make uncomfortable decisions if that's what it takes to be absolutely faithful to your kingdom. Lord, we pray today for the leaders of the churches. Help them, Lord, in a time of terrible apostasy on every side. Lord, turn hearts for your glory and the help of your people. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, it always ends awfully. It always ends poorly for unfaithful leaders and unfaithful men. May God nurture today godly, faithful leaders that are true to the word of God true to God's counsels for this time. It's urgent. Let's do it now. God be with each one, especially you leaders out there.